as I began the Holy Mass, I said that we have 40 days for our spiritual exercise. So we want to tell Jesus today that we are ready to say yes to you. We want to walk with you in the desert, in our deserts, so that at the end, we come together on the foot of the cross on Good Friday. This is our goal today, to promise Jesus that we are ready for the spiritual journey. And Jesus speaks of three things which have become the traditional practice during Lent. These are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But he cautions us that these practices should not be sure. We should not do as a sure so that people they can see and they appreciate us. Christians, Catholics are praying, are fasting, are giving alms. That is not the aim. The aim of praying, fasting, and giving alms is just only one thing, to have my inner conversion. I'm praying, I'm fasting, so that I can be a new person, not the same one. The way I enter in these 40 days and the way I will finish those 40 days should be different. I go in empty, I come out so enriched with the graces, blessings, this is the goal of 40 days. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we are able to travel so many miles around the world, maybe around our state. We travel very far away just to investigate things investigate other people, what they do, see the nature of the world. But there is one distance which is difficult for us to conquer. There is one journey which we find it difficult to make. It is a journey inward. It is a journey of going inside oneself. When it comes to the time to travel inside ourselves to inv investigate us, the journey becomes sometimes impossible. During Lent, the church gives us three practical Lenten disciplines to evaluate ourselves. As I said, the first one, the first tool which we, the church gives us is prayer. As you consider your time which you spend in prayer, try to ask yourself, how do you pray? How do you pray? What kind of prayer do you like to pray? Have you adopted any new habits? Have you left behind customs, prayer that were good for you? The church doesn't ask you to, to stay for the prayer for maybe hours and hours. If you can, it's good. But just give even five minutes daily. And if possible, do mental prayers. Jesus, I'm a sinner. 
have mercy on me. Simple like that. The issue is, who is the center of your life in prayer? In my life, I have many things which occupy me. I need to set aside just three minutes, five minutes, whereby I can stay with Jesus. We can stay with our friends for many and many hours without even noticing that the time has gone. And when somebody says it's more than two hours we have been together, say no. But try to ask yourself, when you stay in front of Jesus for 10 minutes, what happens? You start sleeping. Maybe your ideas go here and there. Now is the time for us to pray. Short prayer. At the end, every, every night, try to do the examination of conscience. Before you go to bed, one of your prayer be examination of conscience. How was the day gone? How did you feel all over the day? The challenges. Maybe you did something which they are not good. Maybe somebody did something to you. You are annoyed. Examine your conscience and tell Jesus that here I am. I'm a sinner. I ask you, forgive me. The second thing which the church recommends us during the Lent season is fasting. Most of the time when we talk about fasting, we run something like food, something like drinks. It's okay. It's good. You can fast food. You can fast chocolate, dessert, cookies. It's fine. I'm not against of that. But can we also fast about sin? Can you say, say that for these 40 days, I want to train myself against the sin. And let me suggest one of the sins. Gossiping. Gossiping. Holy Father Francis is talking much about the gossiping. And he said, if we want to gossip, bite your tongue. You will stop gossiping. But for me, I say that you can bite your tongue, but if you cannot bite your tongue, talk something good about the person whom you want to gossip. Train yourself to talk positive things against others. Do you think he has nothing good at all? This is a fasting. But I'm, I'm saying that again, we can fast also the food, the drinks. Why? To, to, to have the awareness that my body is not just, the, just for eating and drinking. Let me tell you, my brothers and, and sisters, you are so blessed here in America. You don't know. I went to one store here in America when I came. Almost three quarters of the store, you are selling food for pets. You are so blessed. So, Try to think about those who have nothing. There are some people in this world, they are looking for just one meal and they don't have. 
they are living in this life just with one dollar per day. Even under one dollar. And when you tell them to fast, they do fasting. And they are happy. Let us ask ourselves, can I fast for the others? I'm just giving and suggesting to you, you just put the box in maybe or something at your house. Every day for fasting, you put some coin inside. Maybe it's one dollar or what. Every day when you want to go out of your house, just put something and say that this is my fasting to share with those who have nothing. You cannot imagine. You cannot imagine what a difference are you going to make in this world. But remember that it's not just for you. It's for others also. We are the mystical body of the church. If we are talking about the mystical body of the church, I'm not talking of my personal. I'm talking about you and other Christians in the world. You and other people in the world. The third thing is almsgiving. Almsgiving implies that I have been given many blessings, many things by God. What I have what I have been given is not mine. I want to share with others. I want, I'm ready to share with others. How little I have, I want to share with others. I recognize my brothers and sisters who they are in need. Let us think about that during this land. Who are the brothers and sisters who they are in need, whom you want to share with them. What kind of alms giving are you going to share with others? The poor ones, those who are in need. Am I generous to my family? I'm not talking just we have to be generous to others. Start with your home. Are you generous? with your family? Are you sharing with your family the good stories as well as the difficulty and the challenges which you, you, you get in this world? My dear brothers and sisters, there is imposition of ashes in our foreheads today. When we bear the cross today by the imposition of the ashes, we remind the world that we are no longer of this world. We are no longer ready to play the game that the world is playing. We declare that we want to remain to be the son of God, the daughter of God. We want to move to be a new people. Today we start the, our journey in our inner desert, the journey which end up to the foot of the cross. It is true that it will not be the first time to make such commitment. Yes, we have done such commitment before. Sometimes we have failed in our commitment, in our plans, in our intentions. But my dear brothers and sisters, don't despair. Don't despair. Don't give up. Start today that journey. Every day, Tell Jesus that I want to be yours. 
help me to be yours. The ashes in, for, in, in our foreheads remind us in this season of Lent, we have to make a journey of repentance to turn away from our sins and becoming new person, better person. The ashes remind us this life is a temporal life. We were created, we were born not to live in this world. We were born to serve in this world so that we can live well in the next world. So my brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves for the next world by living good in this world. Let us enjoy and embrace the lengthened graces with joy. God loves us. That's why he gives this opportunity to us, the 40 days of graces. Let us embrace them.